stu still doing that, you know. Christians, physicians, nurses are braving primitive conditions throughout the world today to heal those who have no health insurance and no money and no hope. In Christ's name, Christians have started soup kitchens and orphanages and Alcoholics Anonymous and drug rehab centers and old folks homes. That's what they used to call facilities that uh, were for the elderly in a time when nobody was making money by taking care of the elderly. In Christ's name, Christians have carried dying people off the streets in India so that they might die in dignity. We, the church, are always tempted to try the other way, the way of the Pilots and the Herods and the Emperors and the soldiers. We're always tempted to believe that if we can get our hands on enough money, or if we can persuade the government to do it for us, if we can just grasp the levers of power, that all will be well. But King Jesus has shown us a new way. He's shown us the cross. Jesus said to Pilate, you say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The truth to which Jesus testifies is the truth of the cross. For 2,000 years, over 2,000 years, it seemed pure folly that a man would become king by dying on a cross. The Apostle Paul called it the foolishness of the cross. Jesus called it the truth. And the truth prompts us to speak and live this truth, Jesus and the power of his cross. It is that what our world needs, and it is the message that we bring. Hmm? In a short while, we have the opportunity to demonstrate our thankfulness to King Jesus for bringing the truth into our midst. It's something that really we do every Sunday and hopefully throughout the week. But this particular Sunday gives us an opportunity to go a little bit beyond that sort of thing. It's a way of saying thank you for Jesus' grace toward us and for the mission and ministry opportunities that he has placed before each one of us. Individually, collectively. It's just like he's doing for so many of the Christian congregations in our community and beyond. It's happening throughout this community. And why are we doing this today? Why in particular? Well, for one thing, it's to discover ways in which God is bringing us into his vision. His vision for reaching out even more ways into our community. Now, it's no great secret, is it, that we've been searching for a place of our own? Hmm? The, the uh, Permanent Facilities Committee has been working and working and working looking at various things. In fact, we look at land and new buildings. We've looked at existing buildings and we've had all kinds of things that, that come up in our way. But regardless of those things, we have this vision and we pray that it will uh, coincide, that it will be in concord with the vision that God is holding up before us. And in order for us to do some of these things, to have a place, uh, a foundation, a focus for being gathered and scattered, we need to know where we stand as far as our ability to have a place of our own. That's the purpose of today. It's to give us the opportunity to say thank you to King Jesus and say, okay, now what do you want us to do? How are we going to do that? We need to be able to see in black and white what are our financial possibilities. What do we have to work with in order to move beyond? That's the purpose of today is to give us some guidelines. We certainly do not want to get ourselves into a situation in which we cannot survive, right? Hmm? 
And what we have right now is a win-win because the Seventh-day Adventists are gracious to us and we have this, uh, the ability and the privilege to be gathering here throughout the week and on Sunday mornings. And at the same time, as we are looking, God will show us that when place when it comes. We are going to know it. Maybe we won't all totally agree, but we will know it. And we will have God's direction. And that isn't going to happen until that takes place. One of the things that, I, that is absolutely key to what we're doing today is this. Uh, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 8 is where he is dealing and, and celebrating with, uh, with the churches in Macedonia uh, in response to a famine that is taking place in Jerusalem. And the churches in Macedonia were among the poorest of congregations of churches. And listen to what, uh, listen to what Paul is saying. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most sincere or severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. And they did not do as we expected, but here's the key. But they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then to us in keeping with God's will. So we urge Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. You see, you've heard me say it before, that as we consider these within our pledges, we can do a little with a little. We can do a lot with a little. We can do a lot with a lot, and we can do a little with a lot. But in all things, give thanks. And our King Jesus will lay it upon each and every heart what he's asking us to do. You see, it's between the individual and our King Jesus and how we give thanks. It's not, uh, in fact, uh, the ways in which we respond to the grace of Jesus talks about our faith. Hmm? Where faith leads the way, our pocketbook will follow. And doesn't mean that, that you give so that you are going to suffer. It means that out of your prosperity, out of your joy, out of all the celebrations, the gifts of God, that is what we do. So that's the challenge today. It's realizing that Jesus is still our King, and He needs to be, first and foremost, the King of our hearts. So before you do anything, and hopefully if you've already filled out your pledge cards, you first of all gave yourself to Jesus, and then let him guide you. You have the opportunity to change your pledge, by the way, if you want to. You can give more if you want to. Well, you know what I'm saying, I think. But let's remember, from the lavishness of, of Jesus' hands being our king, come all these things. In his lavishness, he has given each and every one of us the ability to respond. And it's between you and him that you do this. And as a result of that, we as a congregation, part of the body of Christ, will be able to see here is what we have to work with, and this is what God will lead us into as a result of that. You can't outgive God. So remember, it's all about Jesus. And it's about how we respond to him in faith. Amen.